Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Monkey Island is coming back! I guess it can't be killed. Although on very rare occasions, its hero can. Welcome to the D-List, the show where I list things and my name begins with a D. And right now, I cannot contain my excitement for Return to Monkey Island. The new game in the classic adventure game series was announced in early April, and it's pretty much all I've been thinking about since. I know I recently expressed exhaustion at another nerdy genre comedy series I love coming back, but I can't stress enough how surprising this is. I thought we'd never get another Monkey Island game at all, let alone one from series creator Ron Gilbert. The day this was announced, I was so excited I had to gush at my wife for 45 minutes about it on a Patreon podcast episode. Link in the description. The Monkey Island series has brought me hours upon hours of joy over the years, with its clever puzzles, its brilliant humor, and its not-so-subtle references to one of the greatest theme park rides of all time. And this series was never as frustrating as my equally beloved King's Quest series, because there were no unwinnable states, and there wasn't constant death around every corner. But there were still a few death scenes, a few chances for Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate, to shuffle off this mortal coil. And today, I'm going to rank all of them, or at least all of them that I can remember. Since the deaths in the series aren't the hassle that they are in King's Quest, I'm not going to be ranking them on how frustrating they are, but rather on how entertaining I find them. So let's get to the list. Number 6. I haven't played Escape from Monkey Island as much as the other games because, well, it's Escape from Monkey Island. With its frustrating controls and disorienting cuts between awkward camera angles, the act of playing the game just isn't that much fun, even if there are a few fun things in the game. So having not revisited this game as often as the others, I don't remember a whole lot from it, but I do recall one death in this game. And no, I'm not talking about the fact that Elaine is declared dead at the start of the game. I'm talking about the part where Guybrush can kill himself. And no, not out of frustration from the unenjoyable gameplay. Goodbye, cruel adventure game. Eh, forget it. I'm talking about when Guybrush meets himself in the mists of time. This is probably my favorite part in the game, a clever exchange that gamifies an homage to Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. If you screw up this exchange, you cause a paradox and have to start all over from the beginning of the mists. At one point, future Guybrush gives past Guybrush a gun, and if you're controlling past Guybrush, you can shoot future Guybrush. Ow! Gee, you're right. Gun owners are five times more likely to shoot themselves. Weirdly, this causes a paradox, despite not actually being paradoxical. It's just a looper situation. There's nothing timeline breaking about that. What would actually be paradoxical is if future Guybrush could shoot past Guybrush, but future Guybrush is not given that option. Eh, even the part I like in Escape has to have some annoying thing that doesn't make sense about it. Anyway, otherwise this gun is just for you to give to yourself, and it serves no other purpose in the game, and that's pretty funny. Number 5. Guybrush has a habit of boasting about his accomplishments, and some of them are clearly exaggerations, But one that is absolutely true is he can, in fact, hold his breath underwater for 10 minutes. But only for 10 minutes. So when Fester Shinetop sends you to the bottom of the ocean, if you don't escape within 10 minutes, Guy rushes toast. This is the only actual game over death in the entire series, and you almost have to try to make it happen. Because the solution to the puzzle is well, nonsensical, like all good cartoony adventure game puzzles, but it's so absurdly simple that it's almost annoying. If you haven't figured it out within a few minutes, the game taunts you with fake potential solutions only to pull them away from you. But 10 minutes is more than enough time to accidentally stumble upon the solution just through randomly clicking and trying everything. So while this death is game ending, it's really more of an Easter egg for people who really want to see Guybrush die. And if you want to see it again, they hid it in another easter egg in Curse of Monkey Island. That guy probably couldn't hold his breath underwater for very long. Too bad. Number 4. Towards the end of Monkey Island 2, LeChuck's Revenge, LeChuck captures Guybrush and describes his plans for his titular revenge. It's gruesome. 
But step one is dissolving both you and Wally in acid, and you're gonna need to use your own gross bodily fluids to escape. Or Wally's even grosser bodily fluids if you're playing light mode. But if you don't solve this in time, you will fall into the acid pit. Seeing Guybrush and Wally fall into the acid pit may be a bit nerve-wracking, because by the time the game gets here, you're likely to forget that the story is being told in flashback. You honestly expect me to believe you were disintegrated in acid? Sure, well, I... And yet here you are telling me all about it, looking very integrated indeed. Yes, well, that is, uh, okay, so I embellished it a little for dramatic effect. Now, it's true that it might take you a little while to get the angle of your spit just right in this part, so it is possible to stumble your way into this death, but much like drowning in the first game, they do give you a lot of time here, so if you know what you're doing, you almost have to try to make this death happen. It takes a lot of waiting around. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Brush. Shouldn't we do something? Eh. Nah. I really want to see what happens when that candle burns through that rope. Well, I think what happens is we both die. I would rather we not do that. Sure, sure, we'll die, yes. But it'll make a much better story when I tell Elaine about this in a few days. Wouldn't that be a cool detail? Death? That's it. I'm joining LeChuck's crew. Call me Bloodnose from now on. Number three. Our next entry comes from Curse of Monkey Island, and unlike a lot of the other deaths on this list, this is no mere Easter egg. This is an essential part of the story that you have to go through to complete the game. In fact, you have to go through it twice. Also, it's not a real death. Guybrush needs to get into a crypt, so he does something that would kill a real man, but just causes a temporary indistinguishable from death coma for him. Funny. I didn't think you could die in LucasArts Adventure Games. Well, somebody didn't play the Indiana Jones games. Or find any of the other deaths mentioned on this list. Unfortunately, he's in the wrong crypt. Yikes. Where's that Telltale pounding coming from? No, 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 Guybrush. You're still 12 years away from working with Telltale. After an incredible payoff to a bit from LeChuck's Revenge, you need to fake being a member of the Good Suit family, and then fake your death again. The fact that you have to do this twice may be a little tedious, but it leads to this perfect line. Oh dear, he's had a sudden and completely unexpected relapse of death. Yes, technically this is not a real death, but in universe it is legally a death. And it's certainly foreshadowed with the importance of a real death. I have also seen that Blood Island will be the place where you will die. I'm feeling luckier. Give me another tarot reading. The card says death. So for the purposes of this list, I think it counts. Number two. The lesser discussed second death in the original Secret of Monkey Island barely counts as a death, but there's slim pickings in these games and this one makes me laugh, so it's on the list. If you walk to the edge of a certain cliff on Monkey Island, the ground will break beneath you, and you'll see an option box that will look very familiar to anyone who's been playing Sierra games from this era. But no, Guybrush bounces back safely. It's just a fake out, but what a perfectly crafted fake out it is. A flawless parody of the more pointless and frustrating deaths in the competitions games, of which there were a few too many. Let me tell you, I still remember the feeling of panic I had the first time I played this game when I saw that familiar dialogue box come up. I couldn't remember if I had saved the game at all, let alone since arriving on Monkey Island, and when the fake out was revealed, I had a combined feeling of relief and severe annoyance. But now that those initial emotions are long past, yeah, this part's hilarious. LucasArts in the 90s were the masters of trolling the player without punishing the player. And my number one favorite death of Guybrush Threepwood. Now, last time Monkey Island unexpectedly returned, it brought us Tales of Monkey Island. A Telltale series which may not have my favorite gameplay or puzzles in the series, but it has some of my favorite storytelling in the entire saga. And it's no wonder, it was created by a team that included people who had worked on every previous game in the series, including at least a little story consulting by creator Ron Gilbert. 
and it made the deliberate choice to break from the established Monkey Island formula. Chapter 1 began with what appears to be the ending of a typical Monkey Island adventure, with Guybrush rescuing Elaine from LeChuck. Do you mind? I be in the middle of an unholy ceremony here. Unholy this! Unholy this? Yeah, I know, but he didn't give me much to work with. Hey! But then things take a twist. I... Uh, I'm human. That's debatable. The rest of the season features human LeChuck working hard to earn Guybrush's trust, which is an uphill battle for obvious reasons. But eventually, at the end of Chapter 4, the trial and execution of Guybrush Threepwood, Guybrush trusts LeChuck again. Just in time for that titular execution. The guard was more than happy to release me once I convinced him that it was the only way to win Elaine's hand in unholy matrimony. Wait, unholy what? Unholy this! Guybrush! Okay, so I wasn't shocked that LeChuck was lying about being good now, but I was pretty shocked when this happened. While Guybrush has been required to fake his death and curse, this is the only real Guybrush death that is an unavoidable part of the narrative. And... Yeah, it sure shook things up from the regular Monkey Island formula. Even though we knew deep down that this death wouldn't be permanent, it was still shocking. And Elaine's reaction to it is heartbreaking. Go to hell, the Chuck. Kick his two-faced butt for me. From melee to monkey and all the islands in between, my love. I'll be honest, before this, I always thought that Elaine and Guybrush getting together for good in Curse was kind of forced, but this moment, this made me buy the Guybrush and Elaine romance. On top of things, for those of us who were playing these games when they originally came out, we sat through two recastings of LeChuck over the past four chapters, but this marked the return of the incomparable Earl Bowen in the role. Aren't you dead yet? I've got wedding plans to make. Yes, Earl Bowen, that one guy in that one Newhart episode. And that one guy in those three Terminator movies. The inimitable voice who originated LeChuck and sadly will not be coming back for a turn, but he already played LeChuck three times since retiring from acting. The man's allowed to rest. Out of respect for the newly deceased, I feel I should point out that you wave your sword like a dairy farmer. How appropriate. You fight like a pox-infected undead cow. Ugh, I love when running gags get to be used as awesome moments. The combination of surprise, emotion, and fan service all come together to make this moment, for me personally, the most entertaining death of Guybrush Threepwood. And that's my ranking of the handful of deaths of Guybrush Threepwood. What about you? Which of these was your favorite? And how excited are you for Return to Monkey Island? Or do you need to listen to me explain why this is exciting? Again, podcast link in the description. Let's discuss this all in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, you should check out some of the other videos I've made about adventure games. Also, special thanks to the amazing Charlie Marlowe for voicing Guybrush and Wally in this video. I've been streaming the Monkey Island games with them lately, so check out those archive streams and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And if you just enjoyed me listing things, there's other episodes of the D-List for you to check out as well. And until next time, this is Dave signing off.